Hi, I'm Professor Oaks, the director of EPICS, and, and this module I want to talk uh, to the returning students about how to make that first week count. Uh, there, one of the things I love is, is you only get to one chance to make a first impression. Uh, you all have been on an EPICS team, you've, you've seen how the labs work. Uh, what I want you to think about is how can we make our lab section this semester the best that it, it's ever been? And you have an enormous opportunity to, to shape that. You all are leaders. Uh, returning students when they come, um, and, and we're so excited. We've got the most returning students in EPICS we've ever had. And that has us really it, it excited about what the semester is going to look like. Uh, we think it's going to help with the project continuity. Um, it provides a challenge for accommodating large numbers of students. That's why you're watching this. But there's a huge opportunity. As a, as a returning student, you're going to be looked at as a, as a leader. The new students are going to look for you for expectations, for the tone. I'll tell you that, that, that we will tell them about what epics should be, but they're going to take their cues from you. Um, so there's an opportunity for the new students. I also want to share that if this is your second semester in epics, when we do grading and assessments, we take into account if a student has been in EPICS for just one semester. So if this is your second or your third semester, I want to tell you that, that as, a, as an advisor, our expectations are higher. So we expect you to hit the ground running and, and to be a leader, even if you're not in, in a technical leadership role. You might not be project manager or design lead, but you're going to be mentoring the other students and, and helping them move forward. That first meeting really sets the tone. When I think about the, the teams I have, I, 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 over the years I've been doing this, I've had many teams. I really think in that first week that you can really tell how the semester is going to go. Uh, the best teams get off to a fast start. Not, not If you have mistakes, that doesn't mean you can't recover. I've had some great teams that have dug themselves out, but it's a lot more work. It's so much easier to set the tone. So here's some things that, that I've learned. The first thing is meet with the other returning students before the first lab, or, or at minimum communicate. Uh, get get a, a group text going, a group me, or uh, some other tool that you're gonna use that, to talk about it. If you're not sure who's returning, go to my epics and, and you can see a, a list of the, the who's on the, the students. Um, ideally, you'd, you'd meet with the advisor and, and or the TA but before the meeting to, to just coordinate and, and to go through. But coordinating the meeting uh, before you go in it is really important. And when you come to the meeting, come excited and optimistic. When I think back, um, I, I've worked with in marketing groups. I, I've worked, you know, when I was your age, I, I paid for part of college being in sales. And the sales managers were always enthusiastic. I got to work on some political campaigns and, and that the campaign managers were always, you know, super enthusiastic. You don't have to, you know, overdo it, but you want to come excited about this semester and optimistic about what you can do. That is going to become infectious to the, to the new students. So at first meeting, get with the other students and make sure there's an agenda, at least a simple agenda. All meetings should have an agenda, and you're going to talk about how all meetings are going to have an agenda, and you're, you're modeling that from the beginning. Share the agenda with the advisor and the TA if possible. If not, make sure that you have time for advisor and TA time. The TAs are, are going to want to go over just some simple things with the grading and, and, and some logistics. The advisor often is going to want to set the tone um, for that. I, and with the agenda, you can have printed copies. Some teams do that. That's fine. You, you can print them in the, in the lab. Um, but if you just want to put it up on the screen, that, work, that works really well, too, um, and, and be a little bit more um, environmentally friendly. That, that, that's great. In that first meeting, be efficient. Set the tone and the pattern for the semester. We're going to be doing our organizing quickly, boom, 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 go through things, and then we're going to get to work. You want to set that tone. Um, if you show up and go, well, what are we going to want to do? And, oh, i got to find this presentation. 
and the, the students are sitting there, they're going to start to think, okay, so the expectation of this team is we sit around for a while and we don't have to do a lot. Um, I, I think back to, to one of the I, alums I had a number of years ago. Our first meeting was 17 minutes, and I was floored. I didn't think you could get every, everything done, but she had everything primed, everything queued up. We got through three or four project descriptions. We got students identified on teams. We had the advisor time, and, and they were off working for most of the lab. That was a phenomenal semester. In that first lab, the leadership structure is hopefully you have the project manager and the design lead set. If not, try to meet with the advisor or, or uh, beforehand to discuss. Uh, project managers are almost always returning students and, and to have those, those leadership positions identified is perfectly appropriate in that first meeting when you distribute students in the teams to have some of the, the, the roles, especially the webmaster, um, liaison, may, maybe you want to turn over the financial officer, those things, but you want to have some of the roles in place and those people should be running the meetings. Also, when you're talking to an advisor, just confirm to their knowledge about which projects are, are going to be continuing. Uh, I've had teams, especially when I've taken over teams, that we've had discussions with the, pro the project partner that we might be ending a project or, or we're adding another project. And it's going to look better if, if you, the, the student leaders who are running the team, actually have that information. Um, don't just assume. Um, when you're starting with a team, I've, I've seen teams when they start that want to set a different tone from the previous semester. And they start with it talking to the new students about all the problems we've had. Oh, last semester we did this, last semester we did that. They don't care. And, and actually, what it starts to say is it sets the expectation that, okay, this, this team has issues. Your team rocks, right? Your team's awesome. And, and the new students are, are so fortunate to be with you that, that you should be excited about that. Uh, so talking about how bad the team was before sets a bad tone. And it always puzzles me because if I'm a returning student, I say, well, last team wasn't very good. I was on that team. Now, you can talk about ways to improve, and, but do it in a way to say, okay, this semester, here's what we're trying to set. You don't have to say, and last semester we didn't do that very well. There's a saying I love. Um, one of the most amazing people I know at, at University of Karen Watson uh, down at Texas A&M is you don't have to be bad to get better. So you can talk about the things that you want to do to improve, but the new students don't know any different. So you're going to say, here's our expectation. Hey, uh, this semester we're going to come in and, and we're going to have our, our organizational meeting in 15 minutes and then be done. You don't have to say, oh, last semester we took an hour and a half to do this. Also remember, epics, you're doing real things and they don't always go as planned. So some of the issues you had before were just life happening and, and some of the things that happen and, and you're going to learn from that. Um, so come in positively, but it's, it's okay to talk about here's what we want to do. Now, if you have a lot of returning students, you might say, okay, this semester, these are going to be the focus areas. And here's why we're going to try to get better. What I'm saying is then just stop at that. Okay, stop at that level. Don't say, and last semester we didn't do this. Just say, here's the expectation and, and here are things are, are going to be better. So in that first meeting, you want to have short, prepared overviews of projects. Don't just read from the design review slides. It's okay to take them. But the design review was put together for a different audience than you have. You have new students that, that want an overview of the project. So if you're going to take these, cull them down to just the, the, the key pieces. Think of like the elevator pitch. One to two minutes, what's the project about? <coughs> you also want to make sure you introduce all members. Now, when I think about this, I would probably introduce the, the members before I did the overview of the projects. But have them do you know, their name, their major. Ask them why they joined EPICS and why they joined your team. You know, we've had students from liberal arts that have worked in a machine shop. 
and really wanted to do hands-on things that, that, that were welders in, in that. We've had computer science students that don't want to do coding. You know, that they, they, they want to do some, some hands-on things. Listen to their reasons for what they want to get out of it and, and remember those as they start to get placed on projects. Now, most of our teams will try to assign students to that project that first week. I think there's a lot of benefits of that. If you don't, <coughs> and you're going to wait for the second, second week, make sure that they get on sub-teams because you want them to have something to do outside a lab. You want them to get in a group and you want them to meet. Um, and so everybody's got a touch point because again, you're setting, you're setting a pattern. Every week we're gonna meet outside a lab and the first week we're gonna do that too. Now be aware that some students may have a second hour conflict. <coughs> so you wanna make sure that you get those students placed before the end of the first 50 minutes. So if somebody does have to leave, they've got contact information that they can get them back. Um, PIGS, the Progress Issues Goals. It, it's a model that a lot of teams use. I really recommend it. What I would recommend is that the first meeting, you actually show what PIGS are gonna look like and set the expectation that each of those subgroups are gonna report out the next semester. It's setting the pattern, it's setting the tone. So an easy thing is to say, hey, and here's an example. Progress, we met outside lab. We had a pre-lab meeting. We got this lab organized. Issues. Well, some of the issues we had was filling the leadership slots, getting everybody together, but we overcame those. A pet peeve of mine with the, the issues is people say, oh, here's what we ran into that stopped us. Well, I will tell you for, from my industry background, when you get an issue, the issue should be, here's the issue we got and here's how we overcame it. And, and you're setting the tone over for that. And then the goals you have, is what do you expect from each team? You know, are, are you gonna expect a rough timeline? Are you gonna expect them to read the old documentation, and prepare a seminar? The goals for this next semester should be what you as team leaders are gonna expect the teams to do. Everybody should have a plan to meet outside a lab and they're gonna report back and they're gonna work on the goals for next week. The community partners, this is really important. Um, some of you, I know some of the teams are very connected with the community partner and that's great. We need to, to find ways to get all the teams better connected with the community partners. As a returning student, don't just think about, well, this is what we did last semester. What could we do? Talk to your advisor about, about ideas. A lot of the teams, if they spend time with the partner, doing some type of service activity or, or outside of, of, of lab thing, that could, in your case, also count as an advisor-approved activity. Um, but it, but it, it lets the students know a little bit more about the partner. It also um, is a great team-building activity. So thinking about things that you could do, and by the way, Martin Luther King Day is not very far away and there are no classes, so that could be a thing, uh, opportunity for you to get together uh, with a team or, or another um, time. You should be able to connect with your partner in some way. Uh, most of the partners you can physically connect. Some of you that, that they're further away with the global partners, you gotta do that virtually. Don't wait for the design reviews. Try to get with your community partner, um, your, your project partner right away, whether they're coming to lab or, or whether you're going there. If you're going there, make sure you talk to your TA and advisor uh, to arrange transportation. If your partner's coming to campus, please let Pam Brown or Anna uh, in the EPICS office know that they're coming if, um, and if they're gonna need a parking pass, that we can arrange a parking pass for that. Uh, these are really exciting times and, and I hope that you are excited about this semester. I think this semester could be the, the best semester EPICS has ever had. Um, we're excited about the progress of the partners. We're really trying to, to get the pace of projects improving and that's going to depend on you as, as returning leaders. Um, I want to close with one thought with, with this module. Um, and this is, this is for those of you that are first-year students and sophomores. There are opportunities for leadership, too, as juniors and seniors. 
we're seeing a lot of students when they take epics they say oh yeah i took it as a freshman and, and then i got to to do other things once you've had disciplinary classes and, and can apply those into the epics there are opportunities to to have a different kind of experience and i share that because there are projects that we're not able to do right now because we don't have enough juniors and seniors we have tons of students we we, we have we could always use more students um, and we're overwhelmed with the students we have, but there's some technical capability, some disciplinary capability that we don't have, and so we're saying no to projects. EPICS counts towards graduation almost every uh, major across engineering, science, liberal arts, education, in, in some way. Talk to your academic advisor when you're doing your plans to see if you could fit uh, EPICS in as a junior or senior. If you are a junior or senior, Right now, we're so excited to have you here, and um, we're, we're looking forward to this semester. Good luck, and remember there's one more module to watch.